a very special day when corporate India and sport come together to celebrate Indian sports people, Indian sports honors is what they call it. One year back, in an interview with me, Virat Kohli had said, quote, he's like a monk in a civil society. I hope he remembers that in that interview in Kolkata. Monk, yes, on the field of play. We are seeing the monk-like determination and dedication, but of it, this is a very different Virat Kohli in terms of responsibility in giving back to Indian sport. With Virat Kohli, one of India's corporate leaders, you've been a sports czar, you had an IPL team, hope you have another one. Football, table tennis, multiple sport, but corporate India giving back to Indian sport is new, so many congratulations. First to you, Mr. Goenka, why the awards? Well, quite honestly, I think it's about honoring achievers. Sports has not got the kind of attention that it deserves. Cricket has, but not the other sports. So frankly, a few months ago, Virat and I were having a chat, and I was telling him that uh, I have this kind of plans, and he said he had very similar plans. And we decided that we'll do this together. We'll, uh, and it is about honoring people who excel, inspiring future generations, giving back to society. Uh, Many of us, all of us, in fact, do things for ourselves. But I think I actually took a leaf out of Virat's book. And I think it's time to give back to society. And that's what this effort is. You know, same question to you. Just like in, when you speak to me about Tendulkar and you speak to me about others, and your whole thing is respect, which is what I personally like. Sports awards, honor. You have recused yourself from this election process, Autumn. But for example, if there was a wish list, would Virat Kohli have given this Lifetime Achievement Award to Sachin Tendulkar? Would you have given? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is um, something which is very special to me. And, and doing it at this stage of my life makes it all the more exciting because I have an opportunity to help this grow with me uh, because I'm still to play another seven, eight, yes. ten years, whatever it, it's going to be um, in my cricket career. So I wanted to get something going in a way that it makes a difference to all sports across the country and not just be focused on cricket. I never wanted cricket to be the focal point of this. And to have Mr. Goenka on board, um, it's a great pleasure for me because he has been involved in many sports. He's not just involved in cricket. He's a sports fan in general, and the whole idea behind this whole thing was to, to get a sports culture going in India, to have um, sportsmen or sportswomen have knowledge of all the sports that happen in the country. I did not no have knowledge of other sports, what rules they have, what kind of training is required, what kind of mental setup is required. I had no clue. I was only focused on one sport, and that's that was all that was taught to me. There was no culture where you know you know about every sport and you're following every sport actively. So this is just an effort in that direction to get people to to know that they have a future somewhere in some sport. It doesn't have to be confined to one, but at the same time you know that whatever sport you're going to play, you have an opportunity which we're going to provide through my foundation and Mr. Goenka as well. You know, Virat, I'll, I'll ask you a follow-up question before I take uh, Mr. Goenka's opinion on it. You know, now that you mention multi-sport, one thing in my career that I've seen with Indian sports people, and I'm, my Hindi is not great, but I will drift into that, is English is an instrument of cultural oppression. When Indian sports people travel abroad, London Olympics, if they're not very conversant in English, they feel down, right? They're under pressure. So I have to tell when Virat Kohli plays, how do you deal with pressure? Because I'm sure Indian sports people are watching this. And this is a way, because oftentimes they don't win medals. They don't get a medal. They get two medals. And we start giving money on social media. Oh, one billion people, two medals. How do you deal with pressure? How do you deal with pressure? And sports people, in general, is this a celebration of that? Their ability to take pressure? Absolutely. It's, it's a celebration in general. It's, it, we want this to become an annual event where sports people from different disciplines know that this is going to be something that is very special in their lifetime. 
to be able to achieve this every year we want this to be big we just don't want it to be any you know any award that happens annually and just get a check and a trophy but this is recognition this is respect this is giving back to their efforts this is what these awards mean to us both of us and uh, dealing with pressure it's you know it it comes from see as you said people start accusing athletes on social media saying we only want two medals or three medals no one knows their training no one knows their progress no one knows what happens when they don't have the facilities maybe that's why they don't feel that kind of confidence because they know the facilities that other athletes get are beyond comparison but all they are doing to get medals is had have, have the motivation and the desire to do so for their country we are just trying to solidify that other factor where they will get the kind of facilities that are required to become world champions and get more medals for the country and more laurels for the nation as well can this become india's laureus absolutely well i think uh, this should become uh, one of the biggest awards in the world for indians but it should become one of the more prestigious awards in the world virat you are not only a cricketer you are also a captain you are also a leader can you tell me about your leadership philosophy is this part of your leadership philosophy would you have done this if you were not captain i would have um because i don't believe that after getting captaincy my um connection with people has increased that for me is a responsibility that has been given to me which i'm trying to um do th to the best of my abilities um before that as well generally you know when i met people they told me you know we we can feel the energy that you bring on to the field so i don't think that i would i would still have done this anyhow whether i was captain or i wasn't captain this had this has nothing to do with you know being linked to now being uh, a leader of uh, the indian cricket team for me this was always in my head that i want our country to become a sporting nation i want to give back in some way it would have happened regardless of whether i was captain or i wasn't captain because i feel if you can reach out to people do it in a positive way and make the most of it when you're actually in the thick of things why virat would it have been anybody else well frankly to me uh, inspiration means virat he is somebody who redefines resets the bar every day and i've been following him and i think he is to indian sport what i think nobody has been in the past uh he inspires not millions but tens and thousands of millions and uh, there is no leader like him i've said before and i say this uh, again to me there are two people who inspire me a lot in the from the corporate world it is mukesh ambani and from every other part of society it's virat kohli huge words huge words i have followed you very closely and i will give you one example dhaka 2012 183 against pakistan said ajmal completely mastered you were walking out coming to the press conference i had requested you that you need to speak to us you had agreed the crowd was shouting the other side you said wait you went the other side spoke to the crowd signed autographs came at midnight for me that was the transformation of virat kohli after adelaide you have evolved as a person can you talk about cricket showing that evolution in you how you have evolved with your cricket i don't think anything apart from cricket has taught me more in life uh, i don't think any degree would have taught me more in life than the sport has um it um throws you to the ground it it urges you to get up it tests you all the time it it watches you it ob observes you whether you have it in you not just one season or just two seasons whether you have it in you to play for 15 20 years whether you have it in you on a daily basis you'll be thrown challenges on a regular basis it's not only about the big series or you know um, uh, just just happening once in two years or three years playing cricket in this country is a challenge on a daily basis and you have to deal with those expectations not of people only but your own expectations as well if you have set standards for yourself you need to keep achieving them and you need to keep exceeding them every time that's how you you know stay ahead of the game so this game has taught me everything that i know in life i still continue to grow as a person on a daily basis and um you learn only by making mistakes and this sport will urge you to make mistakes and if you are good enough to learn from them then the sport gives you back and you can be on your journey with your permission one follow up question on this before i come to you the biggest thing in a sports person is self doubt and we have experienced it or seen it i've covered sport for 30 years i've seen it across adelaide 
you had that self-doubt. You doubted whether you were good enough. You got 116, you were good enough. Can you talk about that mindset of self-doubt? Captaining India, losing self-doubt. Cap Virat Kohli, Australia, not scoring self-doubt. England, losing self-doubt. How do you overcome that? I think to see, it's the, the cricket, there's, there's no given in uh, sport. Not just cricket, sport in general. There are no guarantees. There's nothing that's given to you on a plateau. Tough times do come. But if you can look at tough times in a way that they are here to teach me something and I'm going to become a better person and a better cricketer out of this if I'm able to go through this. And the only way you can go through that is when you have a routine on a daily basis where you are giving your 120% and you are answerable to no one. I worked on that aspect of my life. I work hard, which won't be visible to people on a daily basis. Um, to me, criticism and praise is the same. It doesn't matter to me whether people praise me or they criticize me because it does not deviate me from what I need to do on a daily basis and that's to work hard. I have total responsibility of my failures and I you know, respect my success equally. Because I have such a set routine on a daily basis, I don't need to go out there and explain anything to anyone. That's something that has just developed inside me, not in an arrogant way, but I just don't find the need to. I just don't feel like um, you know, my life or my career or anything that I do should be or is controlled by people in any way. I don't let people define who I am or how I need to live life in any way possible and that can only happen when you're so sure of what you need to do on a daily basis to have that sort of mindset. Mr. Goenka, in the corporate world, mein Virat Kohli, what lessons can he contribute? Kya, kya corporate world seek sakta hai Virat Kohli se? Virat Kohli is the master of reinvention, of raising the bar. As you just heard, he's also a very self-assured person. To succeed in corporate world, you need to be self-assured, you need to be confident, you need to be, all decisions are not copybook decisions. So you need to be conscious of what you're doing, but you need to be confident of what you're doing. So Virat, to me, epitomizes raising the bar at one level, self-confidence without being overconfident uh, at the other end. Virat, let's, you just said people don't see what we do. Take me backstage. Last year also I asked you this, that you have completely given up on certain items of food which we take for granted. Everybody loves it, you also loved it. You have instituted a new regimen for fitness for you, yourself, the Indian cricket team, and you are, the, you are the standard. Can you take me backstage what you do, what your regime is, what is the mantra that you have given your boys? How is it that Indian cricket team is now aspiring to be the best and fittest cricket team in the world? Well, it's very simple. Um, you have to have the desire to make every day count, and for that, you need to push the limits, because I realize I'm a part of 15 people out of 1.2 billion, which is getting to play for the nation. So I understand that. I know where I was 10 years back, and I understand where I am now. So I always feel grateful, and I'm always grateful for the opportunity God has presented me with. And where I am today is, is because I was meant to be here. You know? And where I'll go in life, I'll go where I'm meant to go. But the only thing that matters is how hard I can work on that particular path of my life. And um, as I said, I would never have imagined I would be sitting here 10 years down, you know, being the captain of, of India in all three formats and getting to do well for the country. So I just want to make most of whatever's left in my career. And after that, you have so much time to do what you want. But you need to be able to make a difference while you're doing something, not just for yourself, but for, for the whole country as well. For, for me, it's not only about what I do. I should be able to inspire other people to do something good also. I'll ask you one question, take a break, come back with Mr. Goenka. Is Virat Kohli satisfied? Are you where you are in your cricket, in your leadership, in your mental framework? Are you a satisfied man today? I'm a happy man. I would not say I'm ever satisfied. I don't want to be satisfied ever. Um, because once you sit down and think of satisfaction, it stops you from going on to achieve um, you know, your next target, which is working hard another day. I'm happy, I'm very content, I'm very grateful, but I would never be, I would only be satisfied the day I hang my boots. 30 international hundreds, fastest ever, 
Who knows, eight years down the line, 70 international hundreds maybe in ODI cricket, he's not satisfied. He's partnered somebody who has transformed his business empire at its very best in his business empire. So this will be something special. Very quick break back with Sanjeev Goenka and Virat Kohli in this very special show on India Today and Ajdak.